Hey, Freddy here. Today we're going to have a go at dumbing down the Axis fuselage range. I'm a little bit nervous because it is quite an extensive range, but I'm going to do my best. We'll see where we get to. Um, Axis has been popular mainly due to the fact that they got the engineering right, right at the start. And even now, if you were to use wings from five, six years ago, you'd still be able to plug it and play with everything else that you've got from 2023. The reason being, in the fuselage side of things, this head at the front, it's rock solid in its connection and seamless. It fits absolutely flush and it's strong as an ox. Um, so hammerhead style, we've got T-bolts on the front, so you're not just getting your inline bolts, you're also getting side to side as well. And they're all on these, on these ones, M8s as well. Uh, it's a three quarter inch aluminium plate. It's incredibly strong and that's why they did so well. Uh, solid as a rock allows you to go to a larger span wing straight away if you needed to. And, and Axis were very, well, uh, very good at bringing out larger span wings before a lot of other brands were as well. And that was part of the reason. If you don't have that T connection and if you don't maybe have that quite a stronger connection on the front, you get a lot of flex in that front wing and it really doesn't feel very good. It ends up spitting you off. Because they got it straight or got it good straight away, they didn't have to change that. And it still works with all the large span, span wings that we've got. There are a few more options now within the range. And all we've noticed over the last few years is it's been a progression. As the sport has changed, as Adrian, the designer at Axis, has tweaked and, and introduced new models within the range, he's then had to introduce new features within the fuselage range to counteract everything that he's going for in the wings. Hopefully that makes some sort of sense. Um, and what we saw initially, we saw an increase of sizes in the, in the red fuselages that I've got here in front of me. This is a short. Within the red, red fuselage, you've got a windsurf, which is right at the far end, as big as you can possibly get for windsurf boards. In the normal range, you've got a standard, a short, and an ultra short, and a crazy short. Again, that seems quite a lot, but they initially started off with those longer ones. The standard, brilliant, nice, and stable. And as you get shorter and shorter, it just gets a little bit more pitch sensitive, but it becomes a lot easier to start throwing the foil around. Uh, a little bit more nimble with whatever wings that you've got on in the first place. The standards are generally best for people that are learning. We are even teaching people now on some of the easier wings on a short. Um, and then as you, in, as you get better and better, you drop down the sizes. There have been a few refinements uh, with the fuselage since, since its inception. The main one being we have a removable doodad now. Again, for those of you who are fairly new to the sport, you might not have seen it anyway, but it used to be built in. They removed that to allow for a smaller 16 mil mast option as well. Generally, we use 19 mil for winging, so it's not too much of an issue, but otherwise the doodad is, is not there anymore. And they've also removed some of the weight from the head as well, because you didn't need that absolute solid um, connection there. So that's, that's the only difference as they've gone on. Um, as Adrian's designs progressed and got faster and thinner, essentially, he found that basing the wings around this red fuselage, he was having to compromise the wing design because of this thickness in head. And to counteract that, he made a black series fuselage. Okay, this is a much thinner head on the wing, um, enabling Adrian to be able to go thinner, essentially. And by going thinner on the front leading edge there, he could go faster overall. It saved him having to build up too much carbon around the center of the wing to facilitate that head. So the Black Series was born. Does the same job sticks onto the front of the wing, but there are certain wings that can be used on the Black Series and certain wings that can be used on the Red Series. You can't mix and match. So generally, everything a little bit more higher performance, we're looking towards the Black Series wing or anything a little bit smaller in the range. BSC wings, for instance, half the range is on the Red Series, the bigger half that are mainly used for beginner winging, for instance. The lower half, from the 890, 810, S740, they're used on the Black Series wings. They're generally going to be used more for surf performance and for kite foiling, so they need to be a little bit faster and a little bit thinner, hence the use of the Black Series. High performance speed wings, HPS wings are all on the Black Series, same as the Arts, 
um, and probably anything that's going to be coming in the future as well for now. Um, because they've still enabled that T selection of nuts, essentially, you've still got a lot of strength there, so they still can go quite large span. So the likes of the 1050 HPS and the 1099 ART, they're still used on the Black Series and they're still plenty strong enough. The beautiful thing is they're then much higher performance because they're a lot thinner. Again, comes in a range of sizes. Um, I think we've got, yeah, we've got absolutely everything that the, the Red Series has got as well, from windsurf all the way down to crazy short. Again, it depends on what you're going to be uh, using the wings for. We tend to see sales most in the smaller sizes of the Black Series because by the time you've gotten to grips with winging or prone foiling or whatever it is that you're doing on the Red Series, by the time you're dropping onto a higher performance wing, you're also looking at reducing that length as well. Personally, I use an ultra short for nigh on everything, or I was up until the next thing, uh, for winging and foiling, uh, prone foiling, and that seems to be one of the most popular ones. Again, as you drop down the ranges, you're just getting much more pitch sensitive, and when you get to the likes of the crazy short, for instance, it's a very sensitive foil, or, or fuselage, makes it a, a hell of a lot twitchier, essentially. You've got to be really on your game to be able to keep it comfortable. So that's the difference between the red and the black series fuselages. Last year we saw the advanced fuselages um, join the family. And these have been a really big game changer for us, for the more advanced riders, let's say. Um, the difference being, Adrian's been playing around with changing the position of the rear of the front wing and the start of the mast. If you see the two that I've got here in front of us, the advanced fuse here, the front wing is essentially 40 millimeters closer to the mast. And if you think of it in a example as a surfboard fin, when you push the, sur the rear of the surfboard fin forwards in the box towards the nose of the surfboard, it becomes a hell of a lot carvier, a hell of a lot quicker to engage a turn. When you push the fin to the back of the box, it tracks in a straight line a lot better, but it's a little bit harder to start engaging a turn. But once you're in that turn, it's a, it's a lot wider radius turn, let's say. And that's exactly what we were doing, or what Adrian was playing around with, with the advanced fuselages. It came just after playing around. Um, Axis have been very well known for the last few years of making really large span wings and we're really pushing into the downwind side and the dock starting side and even the light wind winging side um, and pumping around in the surf. And when you've got these great big long wings, their turning is affected. They're not the quickest wings in the world to, to start turning because they're so long because we've gone for one positive over another. To help those wings to turn, that's where the advanced fuselage is coming. By reducing that distance between the front of the mast and the back of the wing, and that allows you to enable, it allows you to start a carve a lot quicker than it would do with a longer distance there. And that's the whole reason behind them. The lovely thing is, we've got it on a red series, we've also got it on the black series as well. It doesn't just cross over with the big wings. I now use this for everything that I do. I wouldn't call myself advanced yet, but I am at a, more in, a higher intermediate level. This is a lot more surfy, let's say, and it crosses over to all the wings that I use. So I prone foil on this one. I then dock start on this one um, and light wind wing on the same, whichever one, whichever wings I'm using as well. So they allow you to engage calves a hell of a lot quicker but they are a little bit more squirrely at the same time, hence why we're not pushing people onto them straight away. So there's definitely still a place for the standard geometry fuselages. One thing that's worth noting, when you do drop down onto a advanced fuselage, we tend to suggest going for the size below what you would have in a regular black series fuselage, for instance, or fuselage, red series. Um, if you see the back of the mast here i've got what have i got advanced fuselage crazy short and a, a, a standard geometry ultra short here so the size down essentially from this one but the distance behind the mast is nigh on identical so by dropping down the size you're keeping a lot of the pitch stability if you stayed the same you'd you'd benefit from 
the, the front wing being closer to the mast, it would, it would initiate a turn quicker, but the pitch stability would be a lot softer. It would be quite a steady wing in comparison, oh, steady fuselage in, in comparison. So we do suggest dropping down a size when you go to advance. I believe that's it. That's the fuselages from Axis.